Well, hello and welcome. I am Ana Orrego, a project manager at Part People, and here with my colleague Lucy, she is our communications and marketing specialist. Um, during the webinar, I will cover the key aspect of the gram. If you have any question, please use the Q&A window. Today's session is being recorded and you will receive it via email and it will be available in our website. Uh, please keep in mind that there are many participants online, so if we can address your question, feel free to follow up by email. Uh, currently, we have 50 participants. I would like to know uh, you can you can introduce yourself uh, from your group's name, your name, and the location in the chat window. We would like to open today's webinar by acknowledging the land that we are gathered on and expressing our gratitude for its critical connection to the health of all. We also acknowledge the enduring presence and resilience of Fear Nation, Inuit and Meti people on this land. And we recognize their role as caregivers, stewards and storytellers across Tutor Island. We are honored to be able to gather together today as we believe the part should play a vital role in providing shared space for all people and not an important space for reconciliation and decolonization. I am joined this webinar from the traditional unseed, unsurrendering territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people. We invite you to introduce yourself in the chat window with your name, organization and what nation's territory you are visiting us from. If you don't know which nation's territory you live or work in, we encourage you to visit natingland.ca or whose land, which we have linked in the chat window. Next slide, please. I will start with a short introduction about our people. Part People supports and mobilize community part groups, nonprofit, part professional and funders to advance city parts as essential space to connect people to each other and the rest of nature. Our national network program provides compressive support through programs and networks, funding and micro grant, events, resources, research, and professional service. Next slide, please. But today we will talk about the TD Par People Grant. This grant provides $2,000 to groups in 21 urban areas across Canada. Through this grant, we hope to connect more people to parts and support the ongoing care and protection of our green spaces. This grant is to fund two events between April 22 and December 31st. This is the seventh year we are offering this program. Over the past six years, TD Par People Grants have provided more than 400 grants to support over 1,000 events in cities across Canada. Last year, in 23, we support 72 community park groups who hosted 200 events, more than 200 events, and programs in person and virtually. During this session, we will discuss eligibility criteria. We talk about the events, what are the requirements of the events, on ideas of the events, what we are looking for in application. This is important to keep in mind. We are going through the application process, the important dates. We talk a little about accessibility fund. This is a pilot that we are we plan to do this year. Are the most important for you, your questions. Let's start with uh, talking about the cities. Until last year, we granted group from nine cities across Canada. But starting this year, 24, we will fund events in 21 urban areas. So the cities in green are the new one eligible for the program. As you can see, we accept now application from our cities in British Columbia. We have Kelowna, Sanish, um, in Manitoba, we have Brandon, and we are delighted to welcome Regina and Saskatoon to the list of eligible cities. 
in Ontario, we expanded the program, including the Hamilton area, as was request for so many groups in Ontario. And additional, we have include groups also in Kitchener, Waterloo, Thunder Bay, and Gulf. And we are more welcome, more happy to welcome the cities of Fredericton in New Brunswick and Charlottetown in Prince Edward Island. Let's talk about the events. Okay, what are the requirements for the events? The grant is for hosting two events. The events can take place any day between April 22 and December 31st. And all events must support the ongoing care and protection of green spaces. This is very important because this grant has a strong environmental focus. Events can be in person or, or virtual. If hosting an in-person event, you must follow your city's public health guidelines at the time of the event. Event must be free and open to the public, meaning that there is no charge or admission or entry fee to participate. Whoever you may have vendors or food for sale as a part of your event. The event must abide by all local laws and permit requirements. Let's talk about, um, about the ideas or events. So the environmental focus or the environmental aspect can be either be a component of your event or the main focus of your event. If you want to host an event with a focus on environmental education, you can consider organizing a workshop on climate change or a medicine walk or host a nature walk. Scavenger homes are also popular among grant recipients, especially among the arts organization or the groups working with children. Your event could showcase a commitment to sustainability practice, even if your event revolves about something else like a movie night or picnic, you can choose to make it zero waste or carbon neutral. Some group host a workshop on reducing food waste, organizing clothing swaps, or host a bike repair workshop. Another way to demonstrate environmental component is through direct stewardship activities, such as park clean up, which is highly popular among our grant recipients, or a planting event, or by setting up a community garden, which is also really popular right now. We would like to say to share some insight into hosting winter event. Keep in mind that these grants run until December 24th, 24, so um, we encourage people, encourage events that get people outdoor, outdoors in all season and weather. Think about activities like a winter bear walk or a snow show. We take a look at the chat just to, okay. Perfect. Now let's talk about the group or the organization type. Grassroots community groups that include, but are not limited to volunteer-based pair groups, local agencies, resident association, and for-profit groups active in their local part. Partnership of any or all of the above are encouraged to apply. And it's important to mention that a minimum of 50% of all the grant will be given to equity-deserving communities. These communities, because of systemic discrimination, face barriers that prevent them from having decent access to resources and opportunities available to other members of, of our society. This may include, but are not limited to Black, Indigenous, and people of color, communities, disabled persons or people with disability, 2S, LGBTQ+, newcomers, women, non-binary, and low-income people. Previous grant recipients are eligible to apply. However, we would like to support as many community groups as possible. So in case of similar application, preference will be given to applicants who have not previously received the grant. If you receive the grant between 2018 and 2023, we will looking for new ideas to form. Let's talk about uh, the type of space. Park and green spaces are public space accessible to the public. Example of 
park and green spaces are city parks, social housing property, school grounds, public plazas, and other urban green spaces. Private property, like for example, a private club, are not op that are not open to the public, are not eligible for the grant. Whoever, if you have questions about your park or green space, please get in touch with us to confer eligibility. Virtual events or programs do not need to be connected to a specific park or green space, but should encourage participants to get outdoors before, during, or after the event. Let's talk about the expense. You can use the grant money uh, to pay for honoraria for indigenous knowledge keeper or elder, honoraria for volunteers, event materials, supplies and equipment, printing of promotional material we provide templates, permit costs, insurance, video conference software like Zoom. You can use the money to pay full for your participants, for your volunteers, for your team as well. You can use the money to pay for transportation if you need it, for essentially any res res reasonable event expensive is eligible. We don't have any limitations in this regard. Let's talk about permits and insurance. So before applying, please review insurance requirements, part permit application process for your city. Your events may or may not require a permit for the space in which they are being held, but from experience, in order to ensure a success, this is research to do ahead of time. So do take a close look at the permitting requirement for your region, including any associated fees and processing times. If you have question about any insurance or permit requirement, please contact the park department or your municipality for more information. Please note that in many cities, planting events are restricted without prior authorization, for example, the city of Toronto. In such case, we suggest participating in planting events organized by your municipality. Let's talk about what we are looking for in application. So this is like the um, criteria, evaluation criteria. The first one is environmental focus. We are looking to, to see the way groups are making stewardship creative in order to better engage community. This is very important. This is a grant with a strong environmental focus, so keep that in mind. Equity and serving community, as I mentioned before, our commitment is to grant a minimum of half of the groups working in equity and serving communities to share the natural space that matter today. Creativity and event ideas, we are looking for uh, new ideas, uh, for unique and interesting event ideas, and new ways to connect people with parks and green spaces, geographic diversity, representation of different neighborhoods in each city is important for us. How many people the events aim to reach? Events of all sizes are eligible, but we are looking to see events that reach a larger audience. I'm not talking about 200 people, but 20, 30, 50, something like that, it, it will be great. A strength of application. We want to know that your event are flexible. Group should demonstrate that they are capable of, of pulling off all two events. So please describe your past event experience so we are sure that you have the capacity. Events of consideration of inclusion, accessibility, as well as community safety. This point I'm talking about municipalities, public health guidelines at the time of the event are related um, with different aspects, not only with COVID, but each city has their own problems, their own struggles. So please uh, look at that. Talking about more in deep about inclusion and accessibility, for part people, inclusion is about concrete action set in place to ensure that people feel welcome, engage, and reflect in the same physical or digital space. We have here some recommendations to create more inclusive and accessible events. For example, 
conduct outreach beyond social media by engaging community leaders, school, local newspaper, and language centers, translate promotion into the most widely spoken language in your community, serve vegetarian or vegan option and exclude food with common allergens, use gender neutral language in your material promotion and presentation, and for the preferred pronouns of your participants, assure the participation of a sign language interpreter, or your event in a wheelchair accessible park, verify that the park is easily accessible by public transportation, and ensure that the event description is accessible to all attendees. This includes providing information on parking, the weather, how many breaks during the event, level of interaction, people need to do something in your event, and the mass policy is also important. In the Q&A section in our website, you will find more recommendations for creating an inclusive event, including an example of a good accessible event description. The link is in the chat. Now let's talk about the application process. All applications must be submitted via SurveyMonkey Apply and the access is through our website. If you apply next last year, you already have a profile in SurveyMonkey Apply. You only need to uh, connect with your account. But if this is your first time, the first step is to register on SurveyMonkey Apply with your full name and email address. Click on Create an Account once you have provide the requested information, the system will send you an email asking you to confirm and validate your address. Next slide, please. After confirming and validating your address, please click on apply next to the TD Part People Grants. You will access the application form. If you need to start filling, the, uh, filling in the form, you can do it and continue later by clicking on save and continue editing. This can be found at the bottom of the application form. We are sharing with you a guide created to assist you with SurveyMonkey Apply, but did you have any problem? Feel free to reach out to me. Now let's talk about the dates. Tuesday, February 27 is the application deadline. By the end of April, all applicants will be notified of the outcome of their application. By the end of May, checks or direct deposit for $2,000 will be issued. As we say, events could take place anyway between April 22 and December 31st. Why we say April 22, even when you are going to receive the money by the end of May? Because we have some groups that they want to host a cleanup for Earth Day and they hide the resources and they can recoup the money spending this activity with the grant payment and after they only need to host one more event. If you don't want to do that, you can do it between April and December 31st. If you receive the, the grant in October, I will ask you for project report or impact report that we used to name in that way. This is very straightforward uh, form. Only I will ask you for number of attendees, number of volunteers, is you, is, it was a planting event, uh, the name and the number of tree that you planted, and we ask for a lot, a lot of pictures, if you are able to share that, okay? We don't ask any information about the way you, you use the money, okay? That is uh, no information that I will ask you. Let's talk now um, about the accessibility form. This is something new that we are creating. This is a pilot. We plan to conduct a pilot in the year with a specific focus on enhancing accessibility at events for people with disabilities. However, this process will be implemented only with the Depart People Grant recipients because we are creating this fund. So when grantees are notified and asked to fill out the acceptance form, groups will be have the opportunity to apply for this extra form by answering some specific questions. What is the idea of this pilot? Leaders of park groups could come and see what 
access in action actually looks like by attending a disability lead program to make the events more accessible and inclusive to people living with disability, chronic illness, or challenge related to aging. This amazing idea is not from part people. This idea comes from an XTD Part People grant recipient. This is a group led by people with disabilities. And talking to them about the idea of creating this fund, they suggested this approach of access in action. And we are more convinced that this is the right way to do it. Our hope, our purpose is to offer this a fund available for all applicants, maybe next year in 25 or 26, but this is the first step of um, extra fund that you will have access later. We need you to help us spread the word. So do you represent are a part of, no, a francophone part friends group? Is the answer is yes. The Center de Ecology Urbain in Montreal, in collaboration with Park People, will be launching the project Connecter les Amis Francophones de Park Canadien. This project aims to drop up a profile on French speaking park groups in Canada and establish links between them. So, if you want more information or you know a French speaking group in your city, please contact a Chloe Serrini Lerres. She is the project manager from the Montreal Network. You can contact me as well. So please help us spread the word. Now this is your time, people. Please type your question in the Q&A and I will do my best to answer them. Let's see. Uh, may you please confirm are you allowed to have an event that includes vendors selling goods? Yes, of course. You can have a vendor, you can sell food. That we ask is that people don't need to pay to participate in your event. Uh, is there any chance to what you are looking for in application now that the grant has gone from supporting three to events or what the change to support more funding for each event? The change is thinking about inflation, uh, $2,000 for three events, we thought it was that the money wasn't good enough for, for, for groups, but we are looking the same that we did last year. Uh, a strong environmental focus, um, you need to demonstrate uh, actions uh, towards inclusion and accessibility. 50% of money equity serving group how to destroy a gift card or honorarium. Uh, this is the grant. The grant, 50% of the grant will be um, will be for equity deserving uh, community or groups working in equity deserving uh, communities. Municipalities are not eligible. Uh, sorry, uh, this is grassroots community groups. Does environmental have to be primary 10 focus or would be another 10 like culture event apart? Yes. Um, we have a lot of arts organization among our grantees. They do like a play. Uh, we have also a sport organization, but it's necessary. I need to see the link between your event and some environmental activity. You can have a play and do a park cleanup. You can have a play, for example, I'm, I'm talking about play because we have a lot of group doing that. And is focus on um, talking about um, climate change. We have that year, for example, in Montreal, uh, this is a group that uh, she's working with um, grating, healing grating. So the idea is go to outside in a forest and do a artistic activity, that kind of stuff are Perfect, but you need, I need to see the link between your activity and the environmental focus. So it's not only for environmental organization, but I need to see uh, an activity that is going, you know, to take care of our green spaces. Can we apply for additional step fund to support the part event? Yes, you can apply for extra funds, no problem. Uh, 
several key start running our events are from equity seeking communities and the events are for equity seeking groups. But our organization as a whole is no, that's the for equity seeking grant. I will let you answer that question, but um, my first thought it will be yes. Yes, it will be yes. Does that include vendor won't pay for a booth or table? People, you, you can have people uh, selling food or or whatever you want, but I don't want people paying to to participate in your event. That, okay, to come to participate in event, you need to pay uh, twenty dollars. That that part is is not acceptable. But you can have food. Uh, uh, other events, for example, have people selling uh, some kind of um, I don't know. Um, clothing, you know, you, you, you can be created in that way. You can have people selling stuff, but people cannot pay to participate in your event. Is the only that we ask. Can no profile organization participate? No, yes, profile organization are eligible. You can participate. I'm here as part of parent council from Alternative Public School in Toronto, who is focused on environmental stewardship. Could we apply? for this grant as a school parent council? As a school parent council, yes, but um, just may answer it more straightforward. I cannot grant schools, but we can grant uh, a school parent council. We did it in the past. Uh, it's important in that case, Rosa, to highlight the impact for your community the impact for uh, not only the community that is students, but thinking about parents, how, how is this going to improve not only the school, but your community in general? Is there any flexibility for the day? Yes, you can, yes, you can have an event in early, early in April, no problem with that, but um, we say uh, because uh, we're trying to link with the Earth Day, but if you host the event before April 22 and you receive the grant, no problem with that. What about donations? Welcome. Laura, could you please uh, explain more that? Are you talking about that you can receive donations? If that is your question, you can do it. Do you have specific boundary for Greater Toronto Area? Does Acton, Acton, yes, qualify. Yeah, you can, you can apply. Do you have a specific boundary for, yes. Can a faith-based organiz organization apply? Yes, no problem with that. You are more welcome that, to participate. How can a small environmental non-profit best support the grant recipients or get involved? How can a small environmental non-profit best support the grant recipients or get involved? Um, then I will say you that we can discuss that this later. You want to reach out to me because I will I will need to know more about your organization. Can the event serve as a fundraiser if possible? Um, I, I will say no. I, I prefer that this event is for community, uh, not for a fundraiser uh, activity. Uh, does the expense plan need to exceed or equal $2,000? No, it could be more or less than that, no problem. Conservation Authority eligible to apply? I will say it depends on the city and the project. In that case, I will suggest uh, to this person to reach out to me to know more about your, your organization, your program, and your events. Can you apply for more than one grant? If you are talking for more than one grant in part people, yes, you can do it. I guess that maybe Laura, you um, live in GTA, you can apply for more than one grant, even if another organization is okay. Can we join a run an event? So there is an environmental fair and we want to organize an activity at the fair. There will be other activities that might cost money, but the one we run will not. Ah. I will say that reach out to me. Reach out to me to uh, take a look at that. And um, I, I need to know more about your event, Michelle. 
Can the two events be the same or part of a series? Yes, no problem with that, Nicole. Can a social event in a bar for newcomers be accepted? Yes, that's, that's great. If we are aware previously, can we apply for the same event and introduce new ID activity to make our application stronger? You can use, you, you can apply with the same event, but it's important to introduce some change. No, we, we don't want to um, fund the same event year after year. It's important to um, make some change and to explain why you are using or why you want to hold the same event. When you say graduate organization, is there a cap for Anna revenue for organization to apply? No. Graduate because some organizations are volunteer based. They don't have like any legal status. It's like a group of neighbors. We are together. We want to mobilize our part. Um, they can apply for this grant. They can apply organization with a charity number, but grassroots organization is really community organization. I would love to have a winter bear world, but the time frame doesn't fit winter in Vancouver. Um, we can make it happen. You can. You, you will have until next year if you want to run an event. You have until December 31st, but sometimes groups tell me I cannot do it this year or the winter is um, that is not fit in Vancouver in, in December. You can host it in January and February. No problem with that. Can you still apply for if you apply for and receive the TPR people grant, can you apply for the uh, Friends of the Environment Foundation? I will say yes, but uh, please not for the same event or not for the same project. Friends of the Environment Foundation is an organization that supports projects. Uh, the scope of the grant uh, of the funding is different and we uh, support events. So it's different. You can apply for both, but not for the same project. You can, can we partner with organizations just uh, such as the Toronto Regional Conservation Authority? Yes, no problem. Can you apply for two grants, each with two events? Yes, no problem. How many applications do you usually receive? Oh, well, depends on the year, but we receive a lot of applications. Uh, is, uh, we receive a lot. Uh, last year, we received uh, 200 applications, I guess. Uh, I'm having trouble falling alone. Um, you can reach out to me if you want more information and we are going to share uh, the video and the slides after and you can always reach out to me. Cancer organization can apply for more than one TD per people grant? No, for one organization can apply only for one TD per people grant, but we have other grants in Toronto and you are more welcome than apply for more uh, funding, but in Toronto. But TD Park People Grant is only one application uh, per group or organization. Can partly know or be done on April 20 way? Yes, no problem. To confirm venue eligibility, would be okay to hold the event on private land. Uh, community farm. Um, I will need to talk with you, Kate, to, to see um, what is the private land in, in the same. It's going to be open for the public for one day only. What is the impact for your community? Um, we, we need to discuss more about that because in general, uh, events should be hosted in, um, not in private land. Private, private property are not uh, eligible for the grant. Does the event have to take place on part side? Not necessary. It depends. Could be um, in a community garden, could be uh, in different space. If your event is not in a neighborhood improvement area, it is less likely to receive a grant. Uh, the evaluation is we is not only the point that we are going to evaluate, it's also uh 
What is the impact for your community? Did you receive the grant before? Which city you are applying? So it's different. Uh, I cannot tell you that because uh, the review process is the staff per people, our community members, and after in uh, consultation with TD, but it's not the only criteria that we use. So let me take a look in the uh, answer. We are no profit, but closely with Metro Vancouver. Yes, no problem, Laura. How many groups out of 200 received the grant? Just curious, 72. Uh, I guess that Yes, Pin, you can apply uh, again this year. Mm. Uh, do events have to be at the same location? No, no, you can have in one park and the other event in another park. Another park. Do we need to come? I guess that. I don't know if you have more questions. Uh, can I apply to have a community event and the part as an option to get communities together? Yes, that's great. Laura, what question? Mm. I guess I answered all the questions, Laura. Um, can same organization apply for more than one TD per people grant? No. You only can apply for one TD per people grant, but if you live in Toronto, you can apply for a sparking change. Uh, if you live in Vancouver, we have another grant there. You can apply for other grant, but TD per people grant is only one application uh, per organization. I guess that... Okay, I replied to all questions. Um, feel free to reach out to me. You have more questions or you need more clarification uh, in some point. Um, let's continue. Access to our resources where we have resources on activities, event, organization planning, case study and research. Um, Remember to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, next slide, please. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter to stay in the loop about per people opportunities, program events. Join our Facebook group to communities to communicate with other community groups and organizations across Canada and follow us on social media. Next slide, please. Make a donation. Your contribution will help steward urban green spaces, promote community engagement, and create vibrant environment for everybody to enjoy. Donate now and make a difference in the future of our city parks. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating in this webinar. If you have more questions, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, send me an email. Uh, I can clarify a discuss with you your specific question related to a specific project. Thank you very much. Um, we keep in touch. Bye.